pay from nine. Basically, this generation is more liberal, more tolerant, more Democrat-leaning than the one before. It's not just because they're young. For another point of view, it's hard news with Russell Brown and Wemo on Kiwi. PublicAddress.net, the hard news blog there, Media 7 show, TVNZ7 on Thursday evenings. Russell Brown, good morning, Russell. Good morning. Lots of stories in the media regarding uh, young people and drugs, and that's got you thinking this week. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, I mean, the, 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 does, there is a, an element of moral panic to what's going on, I mm. think. It goes in cycles, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, not entirely unfounded. Um, I'm um, of the opinion that, that uh, chronic and... Um, Similar products should not be in suburban dairies. You know, I, I think they should be on sale to people who, who want them, but I don't think they should be in suburban dairies. Mm. And, and um, I do think the government actually needs to sort this out. But mm. I mean, the funny thing is that this is pretty much the pattern that you saw with BZP, uh, and that these things have been on sale for possibly as long as a decade. I think the hemp store has had uh, cannabis substitutes for about that long. Yeah haven't really had a problem until uh, all of a sudden the stuff turns up in suburban dairies with behind big-ass point-of-sale displays and 16-year-olds buying it. One's got to wonder um, at what point that happened, how it happened, and who was behind it. I I think there's a degree of irresponsible commercialisation there, led led by the um, the chronic guy. Um, What's his name? The... the, um, yeah, Matthew uh, Weilinger. Okay. Uh, and some of what they've done, I think, has been quite irresponsible. Giving shops great big posters to put it in their windows. Yeah. Um, because we actually, there's actually been quite a lot of um, useful study done on this in the context of tobacco. And what has been shown is that uh, young people are more likely to, to take up smoking tobacco if they frequent uh, shops that have big point-of-sale displays with tobacco branding huh. all over them. Interesting. And I think the same one, uh, you know, same thing applies to chronic. The other interesting thing is that there are three synthetic cannabinoids in these products. One of them, JWH018, uh, was actually is, is the only one that uh, stands. The industry group that sells all the legal, you know, the, the legal highs industry group, actually told the government's... Uh, um, expert advisory committee to ban um, and the expert advisory committee didn't it does appear that, that this one of the three synthetic cannabinoids is probably not the one you want in the market hmm. and this seems to be the thing that has been sending people to ed with with anxiety attacks and racing heart and that kind hmm. of thing it, it, it does it does seem crazy and it, of course it <laughs> Brings up the whole uh, argument about um, you know sensible laws around drugs, but um, you've got this synthetic cannabis thing that seems to be you know just quite wrong, really. Yeah. Um, is legal, uh, whereas the natural product is not. Yeah, yeah, and you you do tend to edge closer and closer to the devil you know. Look, yeah. We we know quite a lot about cannabis now. Um, maybe it would make be more straightforward to uh, look at the legal status of that rather than have what are quite powerful psychoactive drugs being sold from suburban dairies. Yeah. I just think that's a, that's a dumb idea. Uh, although I had to say it was quite sort of disorientating uh, last Friday seeing Peter Dunn uh, urging, uh, you know, arguing against the knee-jerk reaction uh, on close-up, which was quite odd. Yeah. He does seem to be taking yeah. generally a sensible line, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, it's exposure to expert advice hmm. is what goes on there. Yeah. Is that, you know, he's actually in a position now, because he's a responsible minister, he is getting advice that says, look, if you if you uh, make a knee-jerk reaction to this, there'll just be another one coming along. Hmm. Hmm. And what they're working towards is what the Law Commission suggested, which is an actual robust and workable system uh, for regulating the legal highs mm. uh, and that will only be viable if there's if there's a viable path to approval for some of them mm. and i think that's going to be the hard part for the government but it, it, it is i'm glad they're sticking to this but it and of course make sense. none of this is going to happen overnight right no no this will take some time they may get uh some of this in place before the election but i don't i don't think so mm. So it'll be interesting to see whether it becomes an election issue and whether whether anyone say winston peters jumps on it and uh, and starts making allegations about Peter Dunn, which yeah. would be sad because we really need to get away from that stuff. Yeah.
OK, on to um, something completely different, although there will be plenty of drugs being taken um, at Glastonbury. Oh, yes. um, it's, it's, it, it's often at this time, it's hard to sort of get too enthused about this concert because you just feel disappointed that you're not there. Um, but of course, it is happening this weekend over in uh, the UK. Huge gig. You've been looking at the lineup. Oh, the lineup is just unbelievable, including the Wombles. <laughs> The Wombles are playing. <laughs> it's nuts. They've got a pretty good slot at one of yeah. the stages. There is some controversy I noticed in The Guardian about you 2 playing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. No, they've always, I think, you know, in recent years, they've always had, you know, one or two big, pretty mainstream acts. But it's, it's safe. It's a safe option. Yeah, it's a safe option. And they were actually supposed to play last year, but Bono hurt his back, so yeah. the gorillas stepped in. Um, mm. But, yeah, man, when you look at the full A to Z lineup, it's just, there, there are. And it's not even actually the the big acts, but yeah, um, like I'd love to see someone like Raghu Dixit, the the Indian singer. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Yeah, and you know there are just so many great little acts that would, would be wonderful to see. Oh no, one, one day I'll get back there. I, I, I went to four Glastonbury's when I lived in um, Britain, so. I can't moan too much. Yeah, exactly. Well, actually, looking at festivals back here, there's a question about um, where the big day out is actually going to happen. Yeah, not sorted yet by the look of it, although they have said this week uh, there appears to have been some movement. The big day out will be on, and it will be in Auckland. They haven't said it will be at Mount Smart. Uh, it's hard to think of where else it yeah. could be, apart from perhaps the showgrounds. Right. Uh, but... The the thing that that actually makes the event work is that uh, it is very much fitted around that venue. It is, uh, and, and the the stages are quite separate. Yeah, and and they just basically plug in. You know, e- each year they plug back into the same system they use. So yeah. If they had to change venues, it would actually be quite an upheaval. It would, and and you can imagine there would be the initial teething problems that new festivals have, like queues at beer things and food yep. and how yeah, and toilets exactly. and they would have to work out how that how that that new venue work. Yeah. So I'm guessing that they would like to stay at Mount Smart, but but we'll see, because the Auckland Council now wants more money uh, for the use of the venue, and they want a bigger profit. Well, oh, they're just getting greedy. Yeah, I think they, they are. They should be happy that the event happens in Auckland, and other people from around the country turn up to Auckland to go to this event, and that's what the whole Big Little City thing's about. Yeah, exactly, and um, it's not like they seem to put the money into the venue anyway. That venue needs a little upgrading, frankly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens there, but, but the word is this week that it will be in Auckland, and I suspect it will still be at Mount Smart. Okay. Uh, and Campbell Smith will be having some hard negotiations. Mm. All right. Thanks, Russell, and um, apologies to, to the sound of that line. It sounds like you've got a, um electric fence on your line there. Oh, really? It sounds yeah. right at my end. It's going tick, tick, tick. Anyway, Yuck. just coming. It's a one way, one way tick. Indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Russell. Right up. Cheers. Russell Brown at publicaddress.net and. Um, the Media 7 Show on TVNZ7.